Okay, so today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to make a cinema cocktail band or fascinator. And a fascinator is usually a small little hat that is an evening wear hat. Um, and cinema is this material. It's a kind of mesh fiber. It's very thin. Um, and this is a, a pre-stiffened cinema. And what I'm going, going to do is I'm going to stretch it over a hat block to create the shape that I want. And then we will hammer it onto this hat block. So you're gonna need um, a tack hammer and some push pins. Um, that's at least for the blocking part of the hat. And we also need a steamer um, with some hot steam that comes out of it. So I have a, a handheld garment steamer that I'm gonna use. You can also use one of the Jiffy wardrobe steamers that we have in the costume shop. And, um, We'll go from there, so let's get started. Okay, so um, my steamer's going and it's pretty loud, but um, it's starting to work now, and I'll heat up the cinema first. So I'll just kind of hold the steam right over the material. I have to be careful because these little steamers spill easily. Um, the water can come right out of the opening, so I need to be careful at the angle in which I'm holding it. And as the steam gets into the, the cinema, it gets softer, and I'll be able to stretch it over this hat form. Okay, so let's start there. See, it's already getting soft, and I'm gonna try to work on this area that has the crease, but I want to make sure the cinema is kind of um, on the bias, which is how the material stretches. You see, if I pull this in the corner of this material, the, the fibers come together, and that's gonna help work around some of these more intricate shapes. Okay. So I just worked just on this part, and slowly I'm gonna work around to get this fiber to go around the edge of this hat block. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is place the twill tape at the start of this crease here, and I'm gonna pin over the twill tape, okay? So I, I put the tape in place, and then I'll put the push pin over, and that'll help protect the cinema so that it doesn't tear. And I'll just put a couple as I go here. Okay, and then what I can do is start to stretch around the edge. And I want to work slowly with the twill tape and the push pins. And cinema is pretty delicate fabric. Um, so you wanna be um, careful about when you're working with it that you don't pull too tight. Okay, so you just gently easing it into place and the steam allows you to kind of shape it. And you wanna make sure as you're pulling that you're pulling straight out from the sides. Okay, so try not to just pull in one direction all the way around. You always wanna kind of pull from the center out. So I've worked a little bit on this side, so I should probably come on to this opposite end and work this way. Okay, so you could see that was a bit of a struggle to get my push pins to stay in. Um, but I've got them in place and the cinema is pretty tight all the way around. And what I'm going to do is just one last time, I'm going to steam all of the cinema and make sure everything is in place. And that will just help to set the fabric. 
and I'm just pushing everything in the crease so that it really gets um, that defined shape. And I'm gonna make sure the edges around are nice and tight. And then what I do is you're just gonna um, you're just gonna let it cool and dry. So you don't want to take the pins out until everything is dry. Um, if you take them out while it's still wet, you'll lose your shape. So I'll just wait, and then when we once it's dry, we'll finish the hat. Okay. So the push pins are out, and I'll just peel the cinema off of the hat block. And it holds its shape. It's, I know it's transparent, so it's hard to see, but it holds its shape nicely. And I can see my chalk line still, so I'm just going to carefully cut in a straight line. There you go, so you can see it. And um, Cinema is going to be pretty delicate. You can easily change the shape of your hat by stretching it too much. So I'm just going to check it back on here and see that it still is the right shape. And one way to help keep it in the shape that we want it is to do a basting stitch all the way around. And that's going to help to hold the cinema in place as we stitch it together. Now also what you can do is, you know, you don't have to use a specific hat block. You could use like a wooden head block and just shape the cinema over it and then create the outer edge um, more freehand style by just cutting the shape that you want it to be and then basting that edge. So I wanted to use an orange thread so that hopefully you can see it better when I'm basting. I know this material's see-through so it's kind of hard to tell what I'm doing. But I have my, my thread. I have a knot at the end, but usually when you baste, you don't have a, a knot because it's a, a stitch that will be coming out later. So I just want to go in and out of the, the um, cinema here. You just kind of zigzag it onto your needle and gently pull. And when I get to my knot, don't keep pulling. Just let the knot stay there and, and don't pull it tight. Okay, so I'm just going to keep um, weaving the needle in and out of the hat. Just gently pull it. Um, and this is, you know, a running stitch or a basting stitch. And this will help to keep that shape as you're sewing. And it, it should be done pretty quickly. You don't need to take a lot of time. That's all the way around. And that's just gonna hold that circle shape for me while I'm working. And the next step is we're gonna take some black millinery wire. <clears throat> and what we have to do is, I don't know that I showed you this stitch. It's like a buttonhole stitch. So I'll show it to you now. Um, I basically will cover, I will, add the wire to the outside edge of this hat and then we'll cover that with some more uh, cinema which is a this is like a, a binding a bias tape cinema which is meant to bind the edge to cover the wire so that we don't see it and it makes a nice finished hat edge um, but first we need to get this wire sewn onto the cinema which is going to be a tricky little tricky job Okay, so normally when you are sewing your wire onto your hat, you will use black thread. And I'm gonna use orange again so that you can see it. And what I have to do is hold the wire, and it might be bent or curled. You wanna kind of shape it into the, the right size for the hat. You also wanna figure out which side is the front and which side is the back. So, I mean, this hat, you could probably choose either, either way as the front or the back. I'm going to make this my front, so I'll start in the back with the wire. You always start the wire in the back. So what I'm going to do is, let's see if I can get this closer. I'm going to hold it at the edge, and I'm going to take my needle and my thread. I have a knot at the end. Go through the cinema and on the top of the wire, okay? And I'm going to pull through but before I get too far, I'm going to put this needle through the loop. 
and that creates um, it th that just holds the thread on and it won't come undone right so I'm, I don't have to anchor my knot I can just put the needle through the loop of the knot and it'll hold it on okay so then the method for creating this stitch is a tricky one it's called a locking stitch so I have my thread going this way I'm holding it with this finger and I'm gonna go underneath again same direction so underneath from the inside I'm gonna try to get as close as I can so from the inside above the wire I'm gonna go above the wire and as I pull this loop I go behind the loop and then pull. So if you know what a blanket stitch is, it's kind of like a blanket stitch. I'll do it again. So you go underneath from behind, you're grabbing the cinema and the wire, and then I go behind the loop and through it with my needle. So it kind of creates a line and then a straight across line and then another one down. behind the loop. And try not to get too close to the edge of the cinema because your thread will just pull through all the fibers. So you want to go through, go down maybe a quarter of an inch into the fabric of the cinema and try not to pull too tight. So through the fabric and behind the loop and through. Okay, so we're creating this little pattern and it's holding the wire on and I'm going to shape the wire as I go and it's much too long for the hat right now. I want to try to get it closer to the hat size and then it won't misshape the hat as I go. So I switched out the orange thread for black thread and I went all the way around with my wire and stitched that on and when you get to the end and you have your two ends you want to overlap them. Okay, and some of the stitching might come undone um, along the edge, but you know, you just work with it. We're still going to cover it, so it's not the end of the world if it starts to come undone. But I'm just going to finish this and overlap the two pieces. And you might want to pull a little bit of the wire to make this circle smaller. So you can kind of tighten it around to be the size you want it to be. Okay, so that's that's more like the size I want. And then I'll just finish <clears throat> stitching this on and making it secure. And you can um, do a few extra stitches where the wire overlaps to really make it strong. There you go. So for stitching on this bias tape, <clears throat> I'm gonna hold it. You wanna take the tape and fold it in half. Okay, so it's it's this it's this wide and it's actually wider. It's folded two times. Okay, so it's when you open it up, it it's got two folds in it, and that's what creates the nice finished edge. Oh my thread. Okay, so that's what creates the nice finished edge and then you fold that in half with all of those raw edges to the inside. And I'm going to place that over the edge of my hat. So it should be half on the outside and half on the inside. And so it's it's half the width of what the binding is. And I want to start in the center back and they will overlap when I come back around, I'm gonna have it overlap in the center back. And I'm gonna do this in orange thread again so you can see it, but then I'll change it out to black. Okay, so I'm gonna come from inside and I want to stitch it right at the edge and get both edges of the biased, the binding as I'm doing this. So I grab both edges with one stitch. And I just have to keep working along the edge. And if this was black thread, you wouldn't really see these stitches. They would disappear. 
or you can do smaller stitches so that they disappear but you're just going to keep going like this along the edge taking a little stitch so the stitch is probably bigger on the inside but we won't see that and you want to try to just make them as even and neat as possible okay so you're just going to go all the way around and when I get to the back I'm going to overlap it and maybe do a stitch a stitch to finish that edge okay so now I have um, all of this binding stitched on all except the very back and you can see the hat starting to look much better now that the binding is on it's not as fragile and um, it just looks cleaner now so and you can't see the stitching at all I used black thread so I changed out the orange um, and now I just need to overlap these two pieces so since this comes um, it's a bias binding you have to cut it on the bias so I have an angled cut at the edge and I'm going to overlap where I started. I'm holding it in place and I'm just going to finish by going all the way around to the last part of this binding. And I'm just getting to the part where it overlaps right here. You can barely see it. Um, and I'm just going to do a few stitches that follow that line that go from this edge around. Okay, so it stays in place. And you might want to do like more of a whip stitch around the edge to keep those rough pieces from poking out. tie the knot on the inside and when you're using a, a material that doesn't it's not like fabric where you can just tie a knot in the fabric what I'll do is I'll go through the material okay and I'll create a loop with the thread right so I have a loop then put your needle through the loop and then through the loop again and it creates kind of like a locking knot that won't come undone. And then I do that a second time. So I'm going to make one stitch and put my needle through the loop two times. One, two, and pull. Okay, so that's done. And then to finish the hat, there's just a few more things you want to think about. How is it going to stay on the head? So you could use a comb, but that may not work for this style of hat. You would stitch it on the inside. Or you could use a headband, since it's a small hat, a headband might help. Or you can make horsehair loops to help pin it to the head. Um, and then the next thing to think about is the decoration. So you could use some veiling and add that to part of the hat, you know, to the front. Um, you could use some, any combination of like feathers or flowers <clears throat> to really add something, you know? And you just wanna play with it. You could go simple, you know, just use a little, little flower, uh, little feathers. Um, you can make some decorative ribbon shapes as well so you just want to like play with the material and see what makes sense for the little hat that you will have and and how do you want it to look when you wear it <laughs> 